So hello, hello everybody, Bayside here, and welcome to a special how-to video on how to make your own PC, specifically a gaming PC. Now, this guide will also work for non-gaming PCs, but since I am currently in the process of building a gaming PC, I thought I would just take you through the steps of what I did and hopefully help some of you guys out in the future uh, with building your own PC. So, starting out, I want to let you guys know that I am going to be using a website called PCPartPicker.com. As you can see here on the screen, once you make your own account and sign in, you can click on Start a System Build, and it's going to give you this long list of parts. Now, if you guys already have a PC right now, you can actually skip on some of these parts, reuse them. Like, for instance, you don't need to buy another DVD drive, just use the one you already have. Do you need another monitor? Probably not. So you can actually skip uh, several of these parts and, and really get the price down. But I'm going to go through this list here and show you the parts that I had purchased and kind of give you tips and tricks on how to pick the parts that fit you best. Fit your budget, fit what you're trying to do, and hopefully you can end up with something you're proud of. So starting out, when you are going to be building your own PC, the very first part you have to consider is the processor. Now, as you can see here on the website, that is also the very first part they list as well, because pretty much every other decision you make from here on out will be dependent upon the processor that you pick. Now, when it comes to processors, there's two options. You have Intel and AMD. I personally love Intel. I've only ever purchased Intel. I have a lot of experience with Intel, and I love it. Now, I know a lot of people who have purchased AMD processors and they swear by them. Um, they, they swear up and down they're great for gaming, they, they're great for anything else. And I do know that they are also cheaper than the Intel processors. Um, as far as performance, I think you can actually get some sort of uh, comparable chips. Um, but like I said, AMD usually runs a little bit cheaper. So if budget is a concern for you, I would recommend that you start by looking at the AMD processors. But I am going to show you how this whole website works by clicking on choose a CPU. And immediately you can see there's a long list of processors. Uh, a lot of them have pretty high reviews. Um, you can see all the prices and everything listed. Now, since I am an Intel guy, I always go Intel. I love Intel. I am going to select Intel off to the side here just to sort this list to Intel only processors. I also personally like to check the ratings. I don't want to buy anything that has really bad reviews. Uh, there's a lot of chips on the market. You just have to be careful. It's a, it's a buyer beware type of thing. So for my build, I pretty much went straight to the top with the uh, Intel chips here. So I went straight to the Intel Core i7. And speaking from experience here, I happen to know that the higher the model number, typically the better the chip. So as of right now, the Intel Core i7 6700K should be the best Intel i7 chip out there on the market. So that's actually what I selected for my build. Your build may be different, it probably will be different, and it all really depends on what you're trying to do. If you really want this to be a very strong gaming PC, but you have absolutely no idea how to pick a, a processor, start by looking at some of the popular video games that have been released recently. For example, Witcher 3 was a, uh, was a pretty big one that came out not too long ago. And if you look at their system requirements, you can see that they recommend a Intel Core i5 2500K or higher, or an AMD Phantom 2 X4 940 or higher. Now, when I say or higher, that pretty much just means you would be increasing this value here. So you can get an i5 5500, for example, and that would work just fine. But now, this is the minimum system requirements. It is always recommended that you go above the minimum requirements so that way you don't run into performance issues. Now if you're like me and you're a YouTuber, you're going to want to go even slightly higher than that simply because not only does your computer have to play the game, it also has to record it at the same time and that just takes a little bit more CPU power. If you're simply building a family PC that's going to be used to surf the web and check email, you can actually go pretty low on the, uh, the processor because it's not really going to make too much of a difference what you pick. And as you can see, the first thing it does at the top is it does a compatibility check. It makes sure that all of the parts in my build will work together. This is a nice little feature for people who don't really understand what's going on, simply because it will alert you if you make a stupid mistake. So moving on, I'm actually going to skip the CPU cooler for right now, simply because this isn't a very important decision as of yet. The next thing I recommend you go for is the motherboard. So as before, I'm going to go ahead and filter this so that I only look at motherboards that have good reviews. Now if you look at the socket CPU section here, you'll notice this website only lists one option, the LGA 1151. 
And that's because that's the type of processor that we just selected. The Core i7-6700K is a socket 1151. Now every processor fits into a motherboard slightly differently and that's called the socket. If you choose an AMD or a different Intel, you'll probably get a different socket number. Now this website is smart enough to pick up on that and is only showing me motherboards that will fit my processor. So I don't have to worry about that. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna filter the motherboards by the amount of RAM they can support. Now a typical family PC that's just gonna be surfing the web and checking email can easily get by on eight gigabytes or less worth of RAM. Now for a gaming PC, I would recommend that you do not go any less than eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, preferably more. If we look at the system requirements for The Witcher 3, you can say that they recommend minimum of six gigabytes of RAM. So now that means their recommended is probably a lot more than six, um, maybe eight, maybe more. So like I said, I would recommend that you go with a minimum of 16 if this is going to be a gaming PC. Now me, I kind of went a little overboard. Uh, RAM is pretty cheap at the moment. So I went with 64 gigabytes of RAM. So now the next thing you guys want to do is you want to make sure that you have at least one PCIe X16 slot for your video card. Now if you're going to be using two video cards in SLI, you need to make sure that you have at least two slots. Now if you plan on installing a wireless networking card, you're going to want to ensure that you have at least one X1 slot. And finally, you need to pick your form factor. This will determine how big your PC is going to be once it's completely built. The ATX size form factor is your full-size computer. These things can be pretty big. Uh, as you go down the list here, they get smaller and smaller. Your micro ATX case is probably what a lot of the big companies like Gateway or Dell are shipping these days. I went with the full-size ATX case. Since a lot of times you can't really tell the difference between one motherboard and another, uh, I just left this part up to reviews. And then you can also go through and sort by pricing, just see what fits in your budget. But pretty much at this point, anything you pick is going to be sufficient for what you need. Uh, one last note though, if you are going to be using two video cards in an SLI situation, I would highly recommend that you click on the motherboard that you're going to select and look at the pictures. Most video cards nowadays take up two slots on the motherboard, so you have to make sure that your X16 slots are spaced far enough apart. As you can see here, you have one X16 slot right above an X1, and then another X1 with another X16. This is perfect, you can easily fit two video cards in there. What you want to avoid is having two X16 slots right next to each other. Then your video cards won't fit and you can only fit one video card in your motherboard. So now after selecting your motherboard, you'll be brought back to this screen and you can see I now have a warning stating that there are potential issues slash incompatibilities. If you select it, you can see that I am missing a CPU cooler. So that's a good little catch that the website is letting me know. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually pick the CPU cooler. What you pick here doesn't really matter all that much. Just make sure you get something with good reviews and it fits your budget. I went ahead and chose the Cooler Master Hyper D92 as my CPU cooler. Moving on, the next thing we have on our list is memory. As always, sort by ratings. And the next thing you're going to want to do is pick the speed. DDR4 RAM is the best RAM on the market at the moment and the number next to it is its speed. I would not recommend that you select anything above 2400 simply because so few applications are currently set to handle 2400 RAM that it would almost be wasting your money. Now I have seen some benchmarks comparing the 2400 to the 3200 but the differences were minimal and uh, the applications they used to do the benchmarking were specialized to handle the faster speed RAM and even then it was only like a 10% difference in speed. So like I said, I really wouldn't recommend going above 2400. Now the next thing you need to select is the size. Um, most motherboards come with four slots of RAM. Some have six, some have two. So just take a quick look at your motherboard, see how many RAM slots it has, and then look at the maximum amount of RAM it can support. For me, my motherboard can support 64 gigabytes of RAM and it has four slots. That means a maximum of 16 gigabytes per slot. So what I did was I chose 32 gigabytes, 2x16, and I just bought two of these. So that means I have four chips at 16 gigabytes a piece. But go ahead and pick whatever you want. Like I said, just make sure it has good ratings and you should be good to go. Now the next thing you want to pick is your hard drive. If you want really fast performance, you have to go solid state. If you want a lot of storage, you should probably just go with the standard hard drive. 
Now like me, since I'm a YouTuber, I need both. I need my applications to run fast and I need to be able to store gigantic videos. So I chose two hard drives. The first hard drive that I chose was a solid state hard drive or SSD and it had a capacity of 512 gigabytes. From here, I just looked at the reviews and I chose the Mushkin 512 simply because of the price. It had good reviews on other sites, uh, only one review on this site, and the price was just so darn cheap. I had to. Now for my additional hard drive, I actually managed to score a, a really nice Toshiba 5 terabyte hard drive for really cheap. Now if you're going to choose a standard hard drive, make sure that it is at least 7200 RPMs. Anything less and you run the risk of running into performance issues. But uh, from here on out, like I said, just choose good reviews and you're good to go. Now the next part is probably going to be your most expensive single part in the entire build, and that's the video card. There is absolutely nothing worse than playing your favorite game and having it lag, or, or even having to turn down the settings because your computer can't handle it. I know we've all run into that issue before, and for us YouTubers that is a really serious issue because people don't like watching laggy videos. So if you scroll down here to the chipset, the current top video cards are the GTX 900 series, or actually the uh, 1080s and 1070s are coming out right now. Or if you go with the Radeons, you have the R9 series. If we go back to the Witcher 3 system requirements, you can see that they recommend a GeForce GTX 660 or better. And like I said, the 900 series is actually right around the top of what they have available at the moment. As far as the AMD Radeons go, they're recommending the HD 7870. So again, pick that at a minimum and just go up from there. Now since my video card is so completely new that it's not even in the list of options here, I just went ahead and manually added it. Now the next part you need to pick is your case. Um, these are all pretty much standard. Uh, it should fit your hard drive no matter what. So honestly, you're just picking based on reviews and the picture. Just go ahead and start clicking on cases that have good reviews, take a quick look at their pictures, see if you like it, and uh, go from there because this doesn't really matter too, too much. Now the last part you need to look at is going to be the power supply. If you click on it, you'll notice that PC Part Picker has actually been tracking the amount of power this computer is going to require to make it easier for you to select an appropriate power supply. Now since my particular video card is not listed on this website, it doesn't actually account for the, the power requirements here. I just happen to know for a fact that my particular video card requires a minimum of a 500 watt power supply. But whatever build you're doing, you'll probably have a complete number right here. So make sure you get that number at a minimum. Now since I might actually buy a second video card in the future, I just went ahead and played it safe and went with an 850 watt power supply. Uh, this is going to be far, far more than most people are going to need, but uh, this does give me the potential to add a second video card in the future and not have to worry about power issues. From here on out, you can just kind of go ahead and finish out this list by picking whatever cheap parts you find that have good reviews, or if you happen to have an old PC laying around, you can actually steal the optical drive, any software monitors, you can, you can steal the keyboard, the mouse, you can save a lot of money by just reusing parts from older PCs. But there is one more thing I want to add to this build, and that is a wireless networking card. I happen to know where I'm going to be placing this computer, and it's nowhere near my router, so I am going to need a wireless card. Now since I know my router can handle 802.11ac, which is the fastest wireless internet available at the moment, I made sure that I went ahead and chose a network card that had AC compatibility. But from here, I just went through the reviews, picked up one that had a good price, and that was it. Now, once everything is said and done, you should have a nice price down here at the bottom. Keep in mind, this price is going to be relatively close to what you're probably going to end up spending, but it, it is also going to be a little bit high. A lot of times you can find um, sales or other things like that that aren't actually listed on websites at your local computer parts store. Um, you can find uh, combo deals, things like that. If you just kind of shop around a little bit, check Amazon, Newegg, all the big computer companies online, uh, check your local computer stores and you'll probably find some deals that aren't listed here. But once you're done and you've checked up top to make sure that everything is compatible, you can go ahead and start ordering your parts. And once they all come in, you can start building your PC. So I'm gonna take my stuff downstairs, get set up, and I'm gonna start building this PC.